one more, you reckon? I think she nearly went in then. That would have been actually good footage. This way. Not this way. Oh, you're thirsty. Oh, look. Got Katalpa up and going as quick as she goes, which is not real quick. And uh, they started heading towards us and then... We are currently on passage to Jakarta, travelling from Bali. It's our second day at sea and still Bella's birthday. Barracuda. Big barracuda. Oh, oh, barracuda. Oh, look at those teeth. So he's just going to be real careful here because barracuda got massive teeth. Brain it, blood it. Get teeth Thank you, the King Neptune. We've got the first barracuda. It's not our first barracuda, it's going to be the first barracuda we eat. I have my new Victorinox knife out. Works a treat. Thanks, Wendy, for bringing that over. And uh, we're in the background. Underway, but she still manages to get a bucket of salt water over her. One more, you reckon? I think she nearly went in then. That would have been actually good footage. Knot tying lessons with Bella on her birthday. So first knot, I'm going to teach you is a reef knot, very simple. So you get your left hand, <laughs> hit the rope, you put it over the right, pull it through, then put the right over the left and boom. That's what you've got yourself a reef knot. Piece. Second knot I'm going to teach you is called a figure of eight. There's actually two ways to do this sort of like two different ones that are called the same. So first one is like you grab the tail part, you put it in front of you, then around back till it comes in front again, then put it through the hole and pull. And then you have this figure of eight. Or there's another figure of eight. That's what you just fold the rope in half and then you grab the top of it, put it around the back of itself. Then you put it, it comes in front, around the back, and through the hole. And this is mostly used for like, if you had a harness on and like a clip knot, it's called a bowline. So what you wanna do is grab your rope and fold the circle bit, make sure the tail part is like on the top. Then you're gonna wanna pull the end and bring it through the hole or the circle then put it around the rope, this way, not this way, this way, and then put it back through the hole, hold this end with your like pointer finger, and then pull. And there you have it, a bow line. Last knot I'm going to be teaching you is, it's like handcuffs, right? So this is when you have an annoying brother, you're just gonna do a loop towards you, then a loop away from you, put them together, and pull. Through. And you got yourself some handcuffs. Come here, Charlotte. It, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it's upside down pineapple cake. That's what she wanted. But it's yummy. It's delicious. Ah! <laughs> me. Do you want me to light them? Yes. Can I throw this over? Yep. Do you want me to light them? Yay! It's cool now. Oh, you light like down here. No, no. <laughs> you light chance, it downstairs. Last chance. last chance. Give me one more go. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bella. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Oh.
All right, Bella, make a wish. I'm just putting a little bit of mask on the birthday girl. Make her skin feel really delicious. Do you want one, Taj? I'm okay, thanks. Your turn. I'm just gonna be all beautiful after the mask. How was your first day at Bean 12? Good. The fun wasn't too bad. Bella really didn't want to be sailing on her birthday. And we've been sailing all day. The last two days. Has it been okay? Yeah. You had fun? Yeah. Hey, your face looks silky smooth. I know, I look 10 years younger. <laughs> so that makes you two. <laughs> <laughs> so Bella's request for dinner was Spaghetti with pesto on it. <laughs> Pretty simple. Ah. <laughs> so it's the end of our second day sailing to Jakarta and it's Bella's birthday. And today how we're gonna end Bella's birthday is we're gonna have a movie night. So we've got to like pillows and cushions up in the cockpit and we'll have a um watch a movie. We've got nice conditions. The wind's behind us. How much wind we got honey? Yeah, so it's going along nicely, which is really good because last night was a little bit full on. So it'd be nice to have a cruisier night tonight. We've already reefed the sail and we're prepared if if things do get a little bit crazy, but we're hoping it stays exactly how it is. Hello, Queen. A family movie night and sleeping in the cockpit, her favourite place when we are sailing. So we've been motoring for most of today. We sailed all night and sailed this morning, but the wind dropped out to nothing about, well, about 10, I guess. And now we've been motoring. Just the main sail up, it's not doing anything. It's just flopping from side to side, but nice conditions can't complain we're just burning fuel and we are about a hundred nautical miles from an island or a group of islands where we can stop and we think we might stop and have a swim we should be there tomorrow so we'll stop there either for a few hours or for the day and then from there it's about 200 nautical miles to Jakarta. We will meet our friend Jay and he's going to jump on board. So I think he gets there on the 22nd which is in three days so we should be there right on when he gets there. Hopefully. Or if it's you know really good at this island he might have to wait around for a day. Bella's had enough. <laughs> was really good Belle. She's not not tying crazy at the moment. But oh, yeah. she's not crazy. Not crazy. <laughs> Last night was pretty cruisy and nice. We had um, about five six knots of wind and we yeah so we were just sailing along it was really nice. We weren't going very fast, about three or four knots, but then the night before. So I don't really know if I did talk about the night before because I didn't really want to talk about it, but the night before was pretty crazy wind. It was not really predicted that the winds would be that strong, but we had about up to 30 knots of wind. And um, yeah, Lee didn't get much sleep. Like he kind of wanted to be on the hill most of the night because it was pretty, um, really windy but also there's heaps of boats around like heaps and heaps of boats and yeah it got really late he was really tired and I told him to go down and have a sleep but there was a boat and it was two nautical miles away when he went down to bed and then um, I thought it was actually further away than what it looked and it got to like half a nautical mile away and I woke up Lee and told him to come up but by the time he came up so the engine it was pretty close the guy put the spotlight on and 
lit up his boat and I realised how close we actually were. Um, Lee, thank God, got it all together and we <laughs> were away from him quick enough, but it could have been bad and it really scared me. So I was dreading last night, I didn't want to really be on watch. I made Lee sleep as much as possible during the day because I didn't want him to I didn't want to be on watch, but last night there was hardly any boats around and it was really good, so yeah. It's given me a little bit of a, a scare. It was a big tugboat towing another boat, so it was more the, the line and the boat behind the tugboat that was probably a more dangerous part, but yeah. Close call, we were fine, but it, it did scare me. And there's a tiny little bird sitting here. Hello. You're catching a ride, bud. Yeah, you're just having a little ride. Are you tired? Well, you're welcome aboard. <laughs> oh, you're thirsty. Woo! You just needed a drink. Thirsty work flying around the ocean with nowhere to land. Three days at sea and a special sunset dance from Bella. So Bella and I were just stretching and we've got some company in the water. Pink and we actually, because of the light, we're trying to film them, but they look pink. We saw it come up and it was pink because of the um, navigation light. But these pink dolphins were particularly shy. So I just asked Taj um, what he would like. If he was at a restaurant right now, what would he order? Because we've been on passage and uh, he loves his meat. Uh, just before we left Bali, uh, we got some meat and put it in the freezer. And he thinks we've just got like mince and steak and stuff. But Lee actually bought a thing of ribs. We just asked him now what would he order if he went to a restaurant. If he could have anything, what would he order right now? And he goes, I'd like some ribs from Australia. <laughs> so he doesn't know, but Lee's been cooking them all afternoon and we're about to tell him what he's got for dinner. So I think he's going to be a little bit excited. <laughs> Surprise! Taj wasn't the only one excited. Lee was enjoying them too. But look at Taj's face. He is pretty stoked. And there we are there. We got 220 nautical miles to go to Jakarta. But we're deciding whether we're gonna stop at these islands here. Yeah. So it's good diving. And it's 200 nautical miles from Jakarta. So we're just coming into a bunch of islands where we're gonna stop. Afternoon, we anchored up near Karimanjara and headed straight in for a swim. It's always interesting jumping into the water not knowing what we'll see and the state that the coral will be in and the marine life that will be down there. These islands, when we googled, said excellent snorkeling and diving. I know we're pretty spoiled when it comes to underwater, 
but we weren't too impressed with what we saw. It was still really nice to have a swim. Didn't see much, but Lee did find a net. The next morning, after a good night's sleep and a swim, we were on our way again, feeling fresh. Little thing. Well, not having luck with the old Helco lures, the ones that worked up the east coast of Australia. Like every half an hour, we'd have a fish on here. I got nothing, so I pulled out. This is uh, my grandfather's. I think it's probably from the 1960s, but I'm going to have a crack with it. It's so simple. Um, let's see if it's effective. So, again, that um, barracuda was actually really good. So we've Maybe. caught a few of them and I've never eaten them. Let's go see this thing swim. It looked good to us, but the fish mustn't have thought so. We had no luck. We thought there was wind today. There was a lot of wind at the island and then we came out and it's no wind, hence the, like, the motor is running. So we've just been motoring and I've just been editing for half the day and uh, it's lunchtime and there's an amazing man in the kitchen. straight at us and it was and he they'd already put the engine on because it was a little bit sus but he just like gassed it as fast as Catalpa goes which isn't very fast. So we're like got Catalpa up and going as quick as she goes which is not real quick and uh, they started heading towards us and then we started just getting away from them and no way I guess it was just like a little blip on the radar and, and then I caught his light and then I usually give myself a fair bit of room and he just wouldn't. Every direction I went, he'd go, so it was a bit strange. He kept following us, following us, following us, and then obviously we sped up, so it, it backed off a little bit. We haven't had anything like that happen over here, so it was a little bit odd. We don't know what they wanted or what their intentions were, but it's not a nice feeling when, you know, it just got dark and they were just like, you know, it's odd that they just turn straight for us, like from side on. I think because we're under sail and we're only doing like three knots with the wind behind us. Uh, I suppose they're a bit of an easier target, I suppose, but who knows? You might have just wanted a can of tuna or... Yeah, you might have just wanted food or water or we don't know, but those little dot, the little dot that you can see behind Lee's head, I'll try and zoom in. Oh, there's a little dot back there, that's them. 
that's their line. Actually, one of the things coming through these straits, like, there is a lot of fishing boats, and I don't think I've actually seen one on the AIS. So it's pretty much been the radar, and some of the boats are quite big, so just about all of the boats are showing up on the radar, which is a little bit unusual. Like, a lot of the small Indo boats don't show up, so it's really hard to see them. You just see this little cigarette lighter flashing at you, or a little flashlight, or something. But yeah, the bigger boats are definitely easier in these straits, because they're all on the radar. And even though they are timber, they're 50 foot long. absolute must the radar it was brilliant the other night i was able to just weave my way through leaving like a mile or so in between all the boats and there was hundreds of them these videos are made possible by our patrons thank you all so very much if you don't already you can see more real-time updates by following us on instagram and facebook at sailing catalpa Next time, join us as we continue our sail to Jakarta, have some more close encounters with some boats, look for a person overboard, and we arrive to meet our new crew member in Jakarta. Remember guys, if you liked that video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to see more.